Welcome back, everyone. Uh, League of Inches, another season uh, preview. Today we've got the dogs, um, the mighty bull doggy dogs. So got, obviously, as everyone knows, Jason from League of Inches crew jumped on board, massive uh, dogs fan and happy to give an insight. Wanted to wait till after the trials, which is understandable, and just see how a few players went, things like that. And um, then now it's come on to happily give the season preview. So sorry, Doggies fans that have been waiting. Um, it's now here and it's going to be live in a matter of days. So um, look, Jace, I don't need to introduce um, you. Everyone knows um, sort of who you are after watching some of the videos and things like that. But what made you a Dogs fan? Um, mainly just playing for them uh, when I started playing junior reps, uh, made the dog side, the development squad and that, and uh, yeah, started really going for them after that. And yeah, just the local kid as well, grew up in the area. So yeah, before what then- What junior side did you make? Uh, so made, I've played the Bulldogs uh, development squad, uh, Harold Matz, SG Ball, uh, Flegg, and then yeah. I went over the Manly played flag and a bit of uh, reserve grade with uh, Manly. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then... Um, well, there's a nice little bit of information that most people probably didn't know about you, so... No, yeah. Yeah, who, but, any any big names you play with? Uh, yeah, I played with uh, both the Stewart boys at Manly. Um, who else? Uh, Adam Cuthbertson. Oh, cool. who's, uh, yeah, he... He's retired now, but he, uh, yeah, after playing good. with Manly, went over to, uh, yeah, went over to England. Played um, with Indy. Yeah, Trent Cutler, Cameron mm. Phelps, few first graders for the Dogs. Yeah, well, played with few. If any of those boys are listening, uh, if you want to come and jump on and have a bit of a talk, a chinwag with some other good-looking roosters that just want to talk about footy, uh, feel free to jump on board and get in contact. So it would be good to have a bit of a chinwag. Yeah. So, I'll uh, still talk to a few of them. I'll try and, try and see if they can uh, hop on board. Yeah, perfect. Well, look, we're not here to obviously talk too much about that. It's more so about the, the Bulldogs. And I want to sort of hand into this season because there's some, been some good talk for your club, which hasn't been around for quite a few years. And I want to start off with your best signing uh, for the 2021 season. Uh, we've had a few good ones. Like we've gone on a bit of a spending spree, but I think the best one definitely has to be Kyle Flanagan. Um, we we lacked a lot of creativity and a lot of direction as well from that halfback spot. You know, Lachlan Lewis is a, is a, is a decent halfback, but um, you know he does those one percenters. But he's uh, he, he's just not as um, I guess uh, directive. You know, he he, um, he doesn't lead him around the park too well, but hopefully that uh, that's all about to turn around with uh, Cole Flanagan at the steering wheel. Yeah, I hundred percent agree um, with that one. I thought Flanagan is exactly what you need at the moment. He's the halfback. He's the boss. He's that guy that's going to take control. Um, I thought he was treated pretty harshly and unfairly at the Roosters. I think the Bulldogs will suit him to a T. Not as much pressure. Um, he can have. He can have time to build into this squad um, and really grab hold of it. And he could possibly be there for the next 10 years, um, depending on how okay. how he goes over the, the next um, year or two. So um, what about your biggest loss? Who's someone that you look at and go, oh, I wish he was around for this year? Mate, uh, to be honest with you, like the, the guys that we um, you know, showed the door to, they weren't really big names. So I, I don't really think we had a big like a big loss for a few years now. Like uh, for me, I think the biggest loss we've had going back was probably James Graham. Yeah. But other than that, uh, I honestly don't don't feel like we've had a big loss just because all, all the Morris twins as well, they, they were a bit of a loss. But as far as, you know, last year to this year, I don't really think we've had a big loss. Yeah, I, I, I kind of... I was looking at the um, teams and I kind of agree with what you're saying. Uh, there wasn't many that was pointing out. The, I, I noticed, um, obviously, foreign. Um, I'd probably say if I had to pick one, would probably be who I would pick. More so just in terms of the fact that with this team, I think that you're building for, I think if you could stay injury-free um, and worked with Flanagan, it could be a really good sort of pairing for the next year or two, just if he had his body right. Um, 
that'd probably be the only only reason. But I was sort of with you. I think the plays you have let go has been a positive and you've obviously filled it with um, a lot better and starting to clean that salary cap up, which obviously was pretty public knowledge that was in disarray for a couple of years there. Yeah. Um, what about you? There's obviously as there's a lot of talk about the dogs this year. What's your key reason for success? Mate, um, I think the key for success revolves around uh, Trent Barrett and Kyle Flanagan. Trent Barrett is quite an attacking coach, he's helped a lot of teams um, spark their attack and have that, um, that punch in, um, you know, in their backline moves be able to score tries. He, he did it out at Manly. He did it um, out at Penrith. So if him and Kyle Flanagan are working together really well, then he gets Kyle Flanagan playing some of his best footy. And I think the Dogs um, will have a fair bit of success with that, being able to put points on the board. Because that was our biggest uh, biggest weakness last year, not just not being able to put points on the board. Like there was something like um, six games that uh, we lost by um, six points or less. So, you know, th that's that's just purely because we couldn't put points on the board, really. So that's, you know, six or seven wins that fell by the wayside. So hopefully that, that turns around this year with uh, those two guys at the club. Yeah, 100%. I said exactly the same. I said Trent Barrett. Um, I think he was going to bring that. Um, attacking Spark, we've seen what he did with Penrith last year and, and it got him to the grand final. Um, I don't think people underestimate how good he can be as a coach. And I think he was sort of given a rough head with, with Manly. He had to sort of clean up some a pretty big job there. Um, and we've seen with some quality players around at Penrith what he can do. So you have had attacking issues the last few years. Um, I think with the players that you have signed and are coming next year as well, uh, you've really got a good chance to start putting some points on the board and you probably win games like in that 30 to, to 20 sort of score lines. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to defend those to, to eight or six points or something, but I think you will be doing a lot of those high scoring game wins, which you haven't been able to do in um, a couple of years. What's something that you look at yeah. and you go, I know we've got some good signings this year. I know there's a lot of positivity around the club, um, which has been missing. But what's something that you look at and you think is a bit of a concern uh, for this year? Um, concern, I think, would have to be um, our front rowers. Uh, not a big concern, but a concern. Because if they're not getting that punch... If they're not getting that go forward happening, like Kyle Flanagan's, Flanagan's really going to have not much to work with. So if, if our forward pack can fire, um, our back rowers, we've always had our, every now and then they lack. It, he didn't really get much, like he did all those one percenters nicely, but it just didn't give a platform for our halves to work with. So this year, Dylan Napa pretty much playing for his contract. Got Jack Hetherington in as well. So if we can get some good go forward, I think um, that, that'll be, uh, that'll help us as well. But at the moment, I just see that as a bit of a weakness. So Yeah, well, look, guys, we, we didn't chat before this, but we've basically said the same thing for, for every answer so far. And I've actually mentioned... The, the prop forward, but I also mentioned hooker. I do think that's a little bit of a weakness at the, the club at yep. the moment. Um, just those two sort of are sort of key um, positions where I think your, your back line and your playmakers are, are getting there, and especially with the addition of the of Ado Carr and, and Burton for next year, and perhaps Burton's coming a bit earlier. We'll see what clubs are both doing throughout the year. I think that'll influence what happens there, but... Um, yeah, I just think those two positions are ones that when I look at the club, I think are, are probably a weak link. And um, all the good sides have a really good number nine, a real standout. And I think that just at the moment's missing. I hope but it's Marshall King, can he go to that next level? I'm not too sure yet. Um, I haven't seen enough of him yet to suggest he can. Um, but uh, we'll see. But you do have that good young guy coming in. I forget what his name was. I know you Yeah, date Dates. Thanks, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really keen to see, and I really hope he just gets a crack at first yeah. grade. Like, even if he just, you know, for a f first couple of games, just comes off the bench, 
has, you know, 20, 30 minutes here and there, whatever. But at least he gets a crack, gets his foot in the door, can show what he's got. Because like, like you said with Marshall King, I, I, he's not an elite hooker. Like he's a playmaker and like a, a, a decent one, an average one. He won't, he won't let you down. Defensively at hooker, he's, he will never let you down. He's, he's solid in defence. But just that attack, it just he's, he's lacking a bit there. And for me, probably for the last two seasons, I think he's sort of plateaued. Whereas a lot of guys that do end up going from making that switch from, you know, half to hooker, sort of, they either go downhill or they go just skyrocket and their game takes off to another level. But it, for me, he's just sort of plateaued a bit. But, yeah. Uh, 100%. Well, what's your final thoughts um, on the year ahead? Um, and where do you see the, the dogs finishing? Um, it's, it's been a long time, I think, for a lot of Canterbury fans that they were excited to see where a season um, was going to take them because it's been a long time since we've had you know, players like this, a, a pretty good coach as well, and uh, a bit of excitement in the air. Um, so... But like I'm, I'm really looking forward to, it. and it's been a long time since I've, been, I've looked forward to a season for the Bulldogs. I've always looked forward to the NRL season, but um, I think we, I think we can crack the top eight. But I don't see us going too deep into the finals. Just you know, lacking that uh, other half there with uh, Flanagan. But like you said, if Burton manages to come over you know, mid-season or whatever it is, you know, the, that could change a lot, you know, that he could add a little bit more to it and we could make a bit of a run into the, deeper into the semis. But yeah, I don't see us winning a premiership this, this year, but I, I see us cracking that uh, top eight and making finals. Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily see you guys doing eight yet. I think what I think fans need to understand for the dogs for this year is that I've mentioned for a couple of other Years is when a club's been in a losing mentality for a few years, it, it is really hard to get um, players out. Now, the benefit that the dogs have this year is that they've got look, I've rid of a lot of those players that were part of that. So it's not going to be as hard. They're actually bringing in players who are used to, to winning and, and having success, which is a good start to that. Um, and a coach that has just come off um, one of the best seasons that an NRL club has had in, in recent years. So um, I anticipate a more of a building year. Um, I think it's between 10th to 12th for the Bulldogs. I think just sniffing just outside the eight. It wouldn't surprise me if you can sneak in. I think there's a lot of teams that are in that sort of, there's about six teams that can probably be around 7th to 12th. So there's a really big um, jargon of sort of teams that are going to come together and um, make that. But I think it's going to be a bit of a building. And um, Dogs fans, just be a bit patient because I think there's going to be some really good things happen. Um, over the next probably year or two, um, especially next year, but we obviously won't speak too much about next year now. But um, with Trent Barrett and, as you said, Flanagan, there's some real good keys to success coming in there. And once you start signing good players, as we've seen with the Titans last year when they signed for feeder, as you guys now with Addo Carr and things like that, it actually gets the players to, to play a bit better and they actually get a bit excited and know that there's reasons to stay at the club and they want to stay at the club. So, um Jace, once again, thanks for coming on board. Um, good luck to the Bulldogs this year. I uh, really hope for your sake and the fans' sake it's a, a good year ahead. There's definitely plenty of positives to look forward to, um, which we've both agreed it hasn't happened for a while, so it's good to see. Um, yeah, for my, for my sake, I hope they do well. Otherwise, I'll, I'll never stop hearing Josh, uh, Josh and I do complain every week about how the Bulldogs have sucked, so... It'll be a nice change for me for a year. Isn't he a Bulldogs fan? He is. He is, mate. But he's uh, not a very good biggest one. fan, but biggest biggest critic as well. <laughs> Diehard fan, but biggest critic. I think we'll end this video. I think it's fair to say you're going to call him out. Run it straight, Challen. And we will we will record it for the channel, uh, and we'll post I think we it. Up. Let's, let's get that. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck to the Bulldogs for 2021.